And welcome back to Stacy on the Right. I'm Mary Walter with you on Sirius XM Patriot Channel 125. Let's talk a little radio, shall we? Joining us now is Troy Miller. He is the president and CEO of National Religious Broadcasters. You can find him on X at NRB, National Religious Broadcasters, CEO. Hello, Mr. CEO Troy Miller. How are you? Welcome to the show. Hey, Mary. I'm doing great tonight. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. I'm a radio nerd, just like you are. <laughs> so we can, we, I, this, I think, is obviously right up our alley. But I'm amazed and shocked at the number of people who don't even know there's an AM radio in their car. Oh, <laughs> well, that, that's interesting because there's certainly millions of Americans that do, but some people probably can't remember that, especially maybe some of the urbanites. But for those of us who lived out or grew up out in rural America, we're very familiar with AM radio and we use it every day. Right, because what people don't realize, because I was I was recounting earlier, I had a conversation with someone I, I worked on a I did some work this earlier this week on an AM station, and someone said, well, how can I listen? I'm like, well, you know, you can you can download the app, you know, go through the whole thing. I said, or you can listen on the you know in your car when you're driving. It's and I give them the channel number. They go, wait, they're like, well, I don't have AM in my car. I'm like, yes, you do. They're like, no, they don't put AM radio in cars anymore. I'm like, yes, they do. <laughs> And I had to tell him, like, yes, there is AM radio in your car. I don't understand why this is such a problem. But he had no clue that there was even an AM radio in his car. And it's not something that, you know, the younger generation really is all that fired up about. They probably don't know either. So how do you, you, so basically what's happening is the federal government, you want them to mandate that you, manufacturers have to keep putting AM radios in in cars. Is is that a thing that they're going to take AM radios out of cars? Yeah, so here's the controversy that arose a few months back. So this has been in the electric vehicles is where it sort of started. And Ford Motor Company came out and said they were no longer going to include AM radios in their newer vehicles. And the, the reason was because the, there was an interference issue between the AM signals and the, and the electric components in the in the in the EVs. Um, but the government accounting office went and did a study on this and came out to say, well, that's really not the issue to shield. And I, and I have a background in, in electrical engineering, and, and really the, the issue is it's a $35 part to put a shield in there and, and to allow AM radio to be received without any air interference coming from the electric vehicle. So pushing a little harder to figure out, you know, what's behind this push to get rid of AM radio. And it's really come down to a couple of things. One, on the, on the first part, if you listen to AM radio, like I said, if you grew up in rural America, rural America still depends on AM radio. The AM signal reaches a lot farther than the FM signal. Right. It also it also will reach through. Uh, it's better for the emergency alert system because it reaches better through storms and electrical interference and a number of other things that goes on. So our, our most of our emergency broadcast system is built around that AM transmitters going across the country. So that's one thing there that's going on. The other thing is AM radio is primarily dominated by conservative talk and Christian teach talk as well as Spanish programming. And so so we're sort of like, okay, why is there a push to get AM radio out of the car? It's really not about this $35 part because that really doesn't make a big difference when you're talking about a car that costs, you know, ten ten twenty thousand dollars and up you know the push and, and then lo and behold you sort of start to peel up the covers and the real issue is what's now called the connected car and i'm sure you've probably heard about this you talked about it a minute ago about you know just load your app up but the connected car is now you know the car companies you, you get your car you've got this nice big led screen in there and all these apps you can download but guess who controls the access to those apps the auto manufacturers control that access to the apps, and they want to move everything from free over-the-air based to a subscription-based programming inside of your car. And that's just going to leave millions of Americans really out in the dark, not being able to know what's going on in their communities, their emergency broadcast system, or to freely access the information they want to. Right. So I, I made a little note here. The electric vehicle manufacturers with AM, first of all, I, I was going to say, most of the people who own electric vehicles are what? They're, they're mostly liberal, right? They'll start right. screaming because they can't get their NPR. Right. Right? right. I mean, well, think about it. 
Yeah, it, that's right. They start screaming because they can't get through NPR. But guess, it's funny, guess who gets special treatment by the government when it comes to broadcasting and retransmission constantly across the country? NPR. NPR, uh, NPR gets a special deal. So you know that NPR is going to get a carve out to get into the connected vehicle without any subscription, whereas any other kind of conservative talk or Christian Teach Talk is going to have to, you got to download the app and pay for a subscription in order to get internet access. So, yeah, it, it, NPR, and, and the liberals don't want Christian Talk or conservative talk on. They right. only want you to listen to NPR. Which, by the way, and I, this is a true story. My husband and I, when we go up to nor- northern New York, up to Lake George, my in-laws have a house up there. So we make a couple trips during the summer and sometimes in the winter. We go up there, but you lose the signal. And the only thing you can get is AM radio. To your point, especially like in the mountains mm-hmm. and things like that, you can only get AM. So you can't get satellite. I can't even listen to Sirius because it's just a section where you can't get it. So there's no FM. There's no satellite. It's just am radio and we we always we gleefully turn it on because i will never forget we found one of the best we laughed our butts off for i can't tell you how long because we listened to a wonderful show about ferns and i I was just like this is my tax dollars at work it's such a perfect encapsulation of the federal government that i am subsidizing a show about ferns right right Right. now that being said, I'm sorry for interrupting, but that being said, you know, we can laugh about it. But to your point, that's all that's available there. If you live on a certain part of the mountain, that's all you get. Right. So, that's where you get all of your information. Right. Uh, your, your, your news and, and your weather alerts and, and everything else that you get or your over-the-air entertainment. And, again, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything except your AM receiver that you can have in your house or in your car. And and as you said, that's all you're going to get. And this is about, you know, choice. So the AM radio and the DASH Act is about not so much about Congress mandating AM radio, but about Congress stepping in to say, look, Americans deserve a choice and you can't arbitrarily take that choice away from them. Right, right. Yeah, because it's it's I I would assume most of those people though have an AM radio in their home. Like we do. I I think I think that people are foolish who don't have some kind of radio in their home. We even have a storm radio. When Hurricane Sandy hit, I live at the Jersey Shore. We didn't have anything for 2 weeks. We lived with the hand crank storm radio. And if it wasn't for that hand crank storm radio, we would have known nothing that was going on. So people who don't have these things in their homes always surprise me. But in that part of the country, and this is this is also for out west, and to your point earlier, that signal sometimes goes for miles. I was doing a show in Philadelphia earlier this week on an AM station, and someone reached out to me on X who was li- li- listening in West Virginia. Right. It- Exactly. And, and as you said, out west in the Midwest, when the when the severe thunderstorms come in. But even it, look, we lived in Florida, South Florida, for a number of years, went through several hurricanes. And you have to have that storm radio and those storm radios all run on the AM band. So as that hurricanes come in ashore, your cell towers are down, your your a lot of your television stations are down or spotty. But that AM signals coming in loud and clear. And, and, you know, where to go, when to she, to to seek cover, and those kinds of things. So AM radio plays a, a vital role in our communities across the country, especially the rural communities, but also the urban communities when when a national when a natural disaster strikes. So what is what is the plan here? What is your group doing? How is your obviously you're lobbying Congress, I would assume. And I would think that the senators who are out west, the Chuck Grassleys, you know, the Thomas Masseys, those who are in those areas where they probably are dependent on AM radio are listening to you. Or am I wrong? No, you're you're exactly right. But this has a bipartisan support in both the Senate and the House. So on the Senate side, two folks that you wouldn't normally put together, Ed Markey, the liberal Democrat out of Massachusetts, and Ted Cruz, a conservative Republican out of Texas, are co-sponsors on the bill going through the Senate to keep AM radio in, in the dash. And, and the similar over in the House of Representatives as well, you have Mary Rogers, who is the 
chair of the uh, Commerce and uh, Energy Committee, along with her Democratic counterpart that are sponsoring this bill. So Congress is that this has almost reached the 60 co-sponsor marks. And the reason 60 co-sponsors are important because it's filibuster proof and it will pass the Senate. Uh, so we're pretty close. We think we'll be at that 60 mark in the Senate in the next couple of weeks. The House has agreed to take up a second hearing on this. That will happen on April 30th. So at the end of this month, the Energy and Commerce Committee is going to take up a, another hearing on AM and the Dash. And there's, again, broad bipartisan support in both. So it's, it's, there are a few issues that Congress comes together on these days and works, but AM radio is one of them. So we're, we're looking pretty positive, pretty optimistic that this bill will get signed this year before this Congress breaks for all of the elections. That, well, that's great. That's wonderful news. And I think you're right. This is most, if you're in a city, if you're in an urban area, you're probably laughing at this conversation because you're like, I haven't listened to AM radio in ages. But for the, for the rest of the country, the vast majority of it that exists beyond your little bubble does use it. And I'm willing to bet, and this is just a hunch, but I said this, I don't know if you heard me earlier. My nieces and nephews are wild about albums now. Right. That's the big thing. Mm, Records right. and albums and this set. So I bet you I bet you it comes full circle. Oh, I think you're right. But he, even the numbers tell us today that there's a very large in the AM radio audience across the country, both in the rural and urban. So the number of folks that listen to, to AM radio, it's, it's a strong audience. And again, it's a very strong audience in the Latin community. The yes. majority of, of foreign language on AM radio are Spanish speaking stations. And yep. the Latin community really depends on AM radio for their uh, information and entertainment. Yeah. Listen, like I said, I, I've traveled I have traveled out west in Montana and Idaho, and we were driving, and we are like, because we don't know anything. So I love to, because I'm a radio nerd, I love to just put it on, on scan and just see what comes up, because some of the most interesting things come up on both AM and FM when you're in an area that you don't know what you're listening to. But there were, I was shocked at how many areas you couldn't get anything on the FM dial, and it was AM, and there was some great programming on it. We had some really interesting non-NPR uh, programming. So I loved it. I, re I highly recommend people give it a shot. I really do. Everything old is new again. Give it a try. You never know. You might be pleasantly surprised. Troy Miller, thank you so much for joining us, and thanks for the good work. We appreciate you lobbying like that. I, I had heard about this a while ago. I did not know it was still ongoing, so I learned that. So I'm glad to hear that it's still ongoing, and it seems like there's going to be some success. So you can keep up with Troy uh, on X at NRBCEO. Thank you so much. Have a great night. You too. Thanks for having me. Absolutely.